Hey there everyone, Hitesh here. And yes, I know that we are not still touching the loops. We will be doing it very, very soon. The reason I want to focus a little bit more on these arrays because they are important and knowing these methods are gonna save you a whole lot of time on the loops. Surely, all of this is possible through loops, but when we have a built-in method, why not to use it? In this video, I'm gonna be touching on two of the methods, the fill and filter and I use them a lot in my regular coding practices, so I want that everybody should be aware of them, and especially the fill. The fill is a very confusing, especially if you even look in the documentation, it's not really easy to grab it. Filter is decently, moderately uh, tough, but it's not that much. Fill is tricky. So let's go ahead and create an array and try to get through that. We have been using var for a while, now let's go ahead and try to test out these const as well. And uh, there is a special reason I want to use these const var and let. Again, we will have a video where we are going to talk about them. That's a bit more of an ES6 part. Yes, these array methods are a bit more also ES6 part. But a var is for variable, const is more over like a constant. So that's the key difference here. And there is a let as well, but let is more over associated with the scope. I will try to have a video on them, but that's the basic you should know about it. Let's go for war. Uh, as you just say and we're gonna call this one as test array and we're gonna design an array with a few numbers on it for example two four uh, maybe six three in no particular order just make sure you have enough of value so that we can talk about it so uh, maybe five nine eight maybe a couple of more so just make sure you have a bunch of values here now let's go ahead and talk about these uh, logs here so as soon as you have these array, let's just say in my case, a test array, I can put a dot and all of these method pops in. If you look at a little bit here, you're gonna see this fill method coming up. It says returns this object after filling the section identified by start and end value. Surely, very, very uh, explanatory. <laughs> Everybody understood that. So let's just say if I, if I just put out a value of zero on this array, let's just see what is the result because that's the best way to find out what's happening up. So we see that all of the values are now turned into zero because I, I passed it on as zero here. Let's just say if I pass on an H as a string inside all of this, let's see what happens in that. And you might have already guessed that what it does, it fills all of the values with that particular element that you're passing it up there. Okay. Now, instead of using the value zero, I will be using the value h here because that is the most important thing that we understand it up here. Okay, moving forward, let's just say I want to fill it up h. Okay, that's fair, absolutely. But let's just say I say that the second argument is gonna be zero. Now this is where it gets a bit interesting. Let me clean that up and run it again. Now notice here, it doesn't say, it doesn't change anything at all. Now when I say one, or let's just say two, to make it more understandable for you, let me show you what this actually does. So the whole idea is having a start and the end point. So the first variable is always like what you want to fill it up. And this is gonna apply to the entirety of the array. The second argument is about what should be my start position. So in this case, the start position is zero and one and two. So from two position, just go ahead and fill all of this value. So notice here, it just, uh, it just didn't bother about the first two values. So uh, notice here zero, one and it started from the second position. Again, in most of the programming, the start range is inclusive and the end range is exclusive. So make sure you keep that in mind. So here we saw that start range is inclusive. So zero, one, and two is inclusive. So if I'm gonna say uh, zero, one, two, three, four, and five, so again, end range is exclusive. So zero, one, two, three, four, and five, if I just say, comma five, this is gonna be much more understandable to you now. Let's go ahead and clean this up and there we go. We see uh, two and four are not being bothered because we never said it. And we are filling up H on uh, two, three, four position. But again, as I said, five is never inclusive, it's exclusive and that's where you got. So again, I use this a lot, so make sure you understand what are the properties. Yes, there are only three parameters that you pass on, what value to fill up, the start date and end date, and I love this one. Especially in some of my other videos, you might have seen uh, me passing up something like this. If you follow along my other course, not empty, <laughs> this is uh, empty. So I do this a lot, and then it gives a result of whole values empty. So yes, uh, this is how we go and we roll out the things. Okay. 
So this was the all basic. Let's go ahead and crunch up some of the numbers as well. Uh, and then we're going to talk about this filter as well. Whenever you're going to be deleting any stuff or doing anything similar, then you will be using uh, these my numbers a lot. So let me go ahead and say const and my numbers, my numbers. And in these my numbers, let's fill out some of the numbers. Again, no need to have precise these number. Feel free to have anything like 23, 24, 25, uh, 55, maybe 66, 77, 87, and just for fun, 98. I'm just putting up random numbers. Now let me show you how this filter actually works and you will be using this a lot. So let's just say I want to have a const and this is gonna be result. And this result is gonna be a new array and that's what it always happens whenever you use filter you get a totally new array so let's just say my number and i want to use a filter filter there we go now filter what it does it actually expects you to pass on a callback remember in earlier videos we talked about the callback right now we're going to use a callback and an arrow function so how does the arrow function work simply go ahead and use these guys and then arrow function and then write your line in case this becomes a little bit of confusing to you uh Again, remember using the curly braces or you can use these one. We have already discussed them. No point of discussing them again. So you're going to be going through every single number and then what you want to do, how you want to make the filtered or the final array. So in this case, I'm going to be saying that a number which is going to be not equal to, let's just pick up a number which is going to be 55. Okay, let me separate this out. There we go. So what do you think is going to happen in this uh in this result. Let's go ahead and print that out. Again, I will comment this out so that we get a better result of this one. Let's go ahead and run this one and we see the result that 23, uh, 24, everything got up except the 55. And this is one of the things which we all the time do when we have to delete something. We either found out its index or the ID and we just run this exact same logic that I want to build another array using the filter but make sure this guy doesn't comes up rest of them all of them comes up now this is a very common scenario you'll be using while creating your to do's and stuff so make sure you understand how the filter works not only this it has a whole lot of things that i want to filter out uh, all the values which are uh, less than 55 so in that case what you're going to get is 23 24 and 25 so everything that is filtered out is satisfying the conditions. So this is all. If you want a reverse of that, you can definitely have it and we can have a bit more fun in this one. But you get the point that how we actually deal with them. So make sure you keep an eye on these two methods. Very, very helpful whether whatever you are building up in JavaScript, in any framework, you will be using them a lot. And make sure one more very important thing regarding this that hit that subscribe button and uh, I'm going to catch you up in the next video.